Our Contessa Brewer joins us live from Las Vegas with a special interview with one of the sportsbook CEOs who's looking to benefit from the record number of bets that are expected to be placed. Hi, Contessa. Hi there, Tyler. And it's really exciting for the commercial gaming operators as well because they know that more bets are coming through on these legal platforms than even social betting uh, previously. All right, so with me now is Derek Stevens, who's the CEO of Circa Sports and, and the owner of several other downtown Las Vegas properties. This is a big deal for you. I know Super Bowl, but every Super Bowl is sold out in Las Vegas. Can you quantify what the impact of, is of hosting it? Yeah, I mean, Contessa, the last 40 years, Super Bowl's been sold out in Vegas. But what's different this year, with the game being located here, it just started earlier. I mean, there's parties every night. The uh, the amount of spend, the media spend, the uh, amount of celebrities. I mean, the, the other ones, we've got the Live Golf Tournament going on. We also have three other celebrity golf tournaments going. So I'd say the retail spend starting really last Monday um, all the way up through next Monday is, is really the big difference so far. Is that where you're going to see the incremental increase in the first quarter? Is that midweek business compared to other Super Bowls? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, I, everyone's midweek. I mean, the room rates are, are far, far higher than what they How normally much? would be. Uh, it depends upon the property, but anywhere from, you know, like, say, $40 up to $200 above, above what would be normal on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I would say you're probably looking at a 25% bump overall citywide throughout the week on the early days. And then obviously you get to the weekend, you're looking at room rates that, that are double. You know, for uh, a CNBC audience, they might say, okay, but that's a one-off. Like you get the Super Bowl, here it is. Is there a carryover effect for Las Vegas? And I know, I know for instance, F1, a lot of downtown properties got left out of the big boost that they saw. Is it more demographically fair um, when you get the Super Bowl in town? Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas is, is, uh, is always specialized in Super Bowls. Like I was saying, I mean, it's, Vegas has sold out the last 40 years in a row, but this is just different. It's just amped up even further, and, and I think you can see it. I mean, the excitement, the excitement in the casinos on all the casino floors over the last few nights, everywhere around town, it's a whole other level of, of, of juicing it up. And Dom? Tessa, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Derek, it's Dom over here. I, I, you're a casino veteran. I, I wonder, Super Bowl aside, that's obviously a very big catalyst right now, but do you feel as though the city, the gaming industry around Las Vegas itself is in a place where the COVID pandemic kind of is in the rearview mirror and everything is going the way it should have if it never happened from 2019 to where we are now in 2024, Derek? Yeah, you know, Dom, I think I think something's really evolved. I mean, there's a number of things that what happened in the pandemic's changed the way American consumers uh, look at things. Um, I think Las Vegas is set up perfectly because people like to get out. I think we've learned that coming out of the pandemic. There's there's still tremendous pent up travel demand. There's tremendous demand for people to watch and consume entertainment together. It's live sports is live entertainment. And people love doing it in large groups. So it really sets things up uh, well for, for, for a city like Las Vegas. And, you know, I did Radio Row uh, yesterday, and uh, it was amazing to hear how many, how many people really enjoyed this Las Vegas experience all week. Uh, Vegas was kind of made for Super Bowls. You know, I'm curious. You just signed a deal with the Culinary Union that averted a strike in Las Vegas. How much of an expense do you see that moving forward? And, and what does it say about the power of American workers right now that we're seeing these historic contracts? Well, I think we all know what, what happened in the last year and a half. We saw this big uptick in inflation. And, and, and what happened was with some of the unions, I mean, when you have long-term contracts, you don't have the ability to re renegotiate in the middle of a contract. A gallon of gas uh, went up for everybody. A gallon of milk went up for everybody. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a, a, little bit of a payback for, for really what, what was held back previously. I think the deals, the deals that happened with the culinary union in, in Las Vegas really set up, set up Las Vegas and set up the workers to have a pretty good step for the next five years. You've got lots going on. Even as we speak, it's still midday here in Las Vegas, and they've got parties up in the pool level. They've got people down in the sports book already. It is hopping in Las Vegas. Dom Tyler. All right. Thank you very much, Contessa Brewer and Derek Stevens. I will note it's 5 o'clock somewhere.